Let's look at some different types of LTE networks. I'd like to talk about the difference between commercial public LTE versus private LTE versus public safety mobile bro broadband. Almost all the LTE services currently available to the public and business are offered by commercial cellular providers. In the US, Verizon Wireless, AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, and US Cellular are the only providers that operate their own networks. Economies of scale permit them to take on the heavy cost of building and maintaining these networks to deliver nationwide coverage and a platform for mobile data services and applications to a vast market of subscribers on domestic and business plans. Cell phones are relatively inexpensive compared to LMR radios, pocket-friendly, and generally high quality with user interfaces that look good and are easy to use. It's no wonder that businesses and even several critical communications users have had second thoughts about the cost and effort of operating their own communication system. For some, it may be the right move to jump onto a commercial system. To others, however, this move entails giving up too much control. The logic is simple. If you don't own the system, you can't control it. If you can't control it, you can't absolutely rely on it. To give some examples of where issues could arise, consider coverage. Coverage is determined by where cellular companies see it worthwhile to provide it. A public safety entity in a rural area has different priorities and may require coverage in regions that have little economic potential. Call dropouts and loss of service can be expected. Users of commercial systems share resources with everyone else. If the network is overloaded with rush hour, video sharing, an emergency, or hacking attack, everyone suffers the performance hit, including business and organizational users. A public network carries a lot of public traffic and applications irrelevant to business or critical users, who nevertheless have li little control over the prioritization of traffic when things get heavy. Then there's maintenance and upgrades, which are performed according to schedules determined by the cellular provider, not by its customers. However accountable the provider may be, and however worthy the service level agreements, in the end the maintenance schedule belongs to the provider rather than the customer. Finally, when the cellular network crashes, or a key site loses power, or the systems become otherwise unavailable, all communications stop for everybody until normal service is restored. There is no backup service to kick in until then. Now consider private LT systems. Private LT, as the name implies, is a dedicated LT network that serves a specific enterprise business, government agency, or educational group. They can own and operate the system, or they can outsource the private LTE they intend to use to a commercial mobile operator or third-party network provider. A private LTE system is entirely independent of public commercial networks. Private LTE enables an organization to have the benefits of LTE without losing so much control. An outsourcing option removes the need for total ownership or assuming full responsibility for system operations and management. Since a private LTE system runs on its own dedicated equipment, its coverage, performance, and security are decoupled from public LTE services. Large mining companies in Australia are investing in private LTE systems optimized for mining their tra data traffic and enterprise applications. Backup communications, whether using LTE or another technology, will be part of their system design. However, a major constraint on private LTE is the availability of suitable radio spectrum. In many countries, existing licensed spectrum is oversubscribed. Depending on where you are, this can mean either you need to wait until new LTE frequencies are allocated, or you'll have to pay a premium to buy into an existing block of spectrum, or you are placed in a queue waiting for somebody to give up their spectrum allocation. Alternatives include using unlicensed spectrum, such as 5 GHz, with an LTE-based technology such as MultiFire, or using shared spectrum, for example, through the Citizens Broadband Radio Service, CBRS, in the U.S., or through the Licensed Shared Access, LSA model, being tested in Europe. Finally, there are public safety mobile broadband networks. 
These are a specific type of private LT network, one dedicated to public safety and first responders. They are not available to other types of critical communications users and are generally government funded. Examples include FirstNet in the US, the Emergency Service Network, ESN, in the United Kingdom, and SafeNet in South Korea. Australia is also in the early planning stages of a national public safety mobile broadband network, PSMB. The aim of such systems is to provide public safety agencies something that they did not get out of LMR, namely secure nationwide interoperable communications with voice and broadband data. In the US, FirstNet is an independent authority within the National Telecommunications and Information Administration, NTIA, an agency of the US Department of Commerce. The FirstNet Authority contracted private mobile operator AT&T to build and operate the LT network for the lifetime of its contract. Public safety agencies, such as state patrols, fire departments, and federal departments, sign up as subscribers to use the FirstNet systems. So what happens to existing public safety communication systems? If there are LTE networks, such as Los Angeles LA RICS, the equipment will be transferred into FirstNet or its non-US equivalent. If the existing network is not LTE, such as the Tetra system used by the UK police, it will be decommissioned and officers will need to work with a whole new technology. An alternative that has been proposed instead of building a dedicated public safety LTE network from scratch, is to partition an existing carrier network and utilize the quality of service feature of LTE networking to differentiate and prioritize public safety networking. When 5G becomes a reality for mission-critical users, it can offer a more powerful mechanism called network slicing to partition off a public safety system from an existing physical network. With 5G network slicing, it will appear to public safety users as though they have complete and exclusive use of a physical infrastructure that, in reality, they're sharing with other tenants.